Good afternoon. Today we will talk about propeller in open water. We have seen propeller is a hydrodynamic device which uh, generates thrust when a torque is delivered through the propeller shaft at a particular RPM, ship moving at a particular speed. This thrust and torque vary with the speed of advance and RPM. Further, the propeller behaves differently behind the ship than if it was not behind the ship. In other words, if we move a propeller at a particular forward speed and RPM without any disturbance of ship in front of it, then the propeller will, which should behave in a manner which is different from if I fitted the propeller behind the ship. This behavior difference would mainly be measure, measured in terms of thrust and torque as functions of speed and RPM. But to understand the propeller behavior behind a ship where the flow is already disturbed, we have to first understand the propeller characteristics when it is moving in calm water well immersed in water that is far below the free surface so that there is no wave effect and then we can extend it to behind condition. So, such characteristics of propeller is called the characteristics of propeller in open water. So, if we want to understand the uh, characteristics of a propeller in open water, how do you go about it? Imagine a full propeller, uh, full size propeller for a ship, we cannot really test it in open water because that propeller would always be behind the ship. We cannot fit it in front and then test it for various speeds and RPMs, that is very difficult. So, what we normally do is we make a scale model of a propeller and test it in a facility where we can measure the thrust and torque at varying speed and RPM and therefore determine the characteristics of the propeller in open water and extrapolate it to full scale like we had done it for ship resistance. So, to do a model experiment of a propeller, what sort of similarities we should uh, be aiming at? One which we have already mentioned for uh, uh, ship towing test is the scaling of the model that is condition of geometric similarity. What does this mean? Means that any length dimension of the ship to length dimension of the model will be constant that is model scale called the model scale lambda. In propeller case, what, it, what does it mean? What is the length dimension for a propeller? Typically, it is the diameter. So, we can say for a propeller it is lambda is equal to right. All the geometric properties of a propeller will be scaled down in similar manner. That means, all the properties that we have seen pitch, thickness, the shape of the camber that is offsets of the face and back from the uh, nose tail line. Every, every single dimension will scale down in the same scale 
and similarly the area will be scaled down in square of scale. Therefore, you will find that the pitch ratio which is non dimensional will remain constant between the model and propeller and so will the area ratios. Sometimes it may be difficult to mod, uh, scale down thickness uh, and manufacture a propeller in model scale. That is it may not be possible to really scale down the thickness and manufacture an accurate propeller. So, it is therefore advisable make as big a propeller as possible so that you can scale thickness, but sometimes compromises are necessary to be made. Next similarity we have is uh, you have seen this in the model in the resistance case also kinematic similarity. What does kinematic kinematic similarity say? In case of a propeller, it would be that speeds are also scaled in the same proportion, or in other words, the speed ratios between model and ship are constant whatever may be the speed we are considering that is V s by V m will be constant. Uh, we have seen two speeds coming onto the propeller blade, one is the axial speed, the other is the rotational speed, this we have seen last time. So, for kinematic similarity, it is necessary to maintain the geometrical uh, ratios of the speed which can be written very simply as velocity of advance of ship to velocity of advance model ratio is equal to this 2 will not come, we have used d, so 2 will go, right. This is our condition of uh, kinematic similarity. Now, or you can see what we are getting V a s divided by n s d s is equal to V a m divided by n m d m. right. This quantity V a by n d is denoted as j that is advanced coefficient. So, what do we get? We get the advanced co coefficient of model is equal to advanced coefficient of the ship for kinematic similarity. Am I clear? Then we have what we have said uh, in case of uh, resistance kinetic similarity. this relates to forces that is the ratio of forces acting on the model will be same as ratio of forces acting on the ship. And if we uh, think what are the forces that are acting on the model and ship, what do we get? What are the forces? inertial force of course, mass into acceleration right. I am writing general gravity force m 
g mass into acceleration due to gravity. Then viscous force working in a viscous medium, water is viscous that is equal to mu dv by dt right no dv by dy into dy into y the gradient of the velocity you, you, do you recall we did this in the resistance case also the gradient of velocity because the the shear force will be there the drop in velocity across the layers into the distance that will be the total force and finally, the pressure P into area. This is the general I have written. I have not related to propeller so far. But if the inertial force on the propeller was represented by m into a, gravity force was represented by m into g, viscous force as this and pressure force as this, then we can find out what will the ratios of forces look like. Inertia force divided by gravity force will be same for model and ship, right? Similarly, this is one ratio, another ratio will give inertia force to viscous force, and the third will be okay pressure force to inertia force, I am writing, you could also write the inverse of it. Okay. If you just put the units of these, this you can show to be, should you put the units? Mass what is mass? Rho into m cubed, rho into l cubed, rho into cube of some linear distance, right, into acceleration divided by rho g l cubed, right. This can be shown to be, you mean a to g. Uh, that is one. a to g is not 1, is the ratio. But the units, are same, units are same. This also units is non, non unitless. We will see it in another form later. Okay. Inertia to viscous force similarly can be shown to be The reason I am telling you this at this stage, you can make out what is V square by G L, fruit number square. So, this is related to fruit number, right. This is related to Reynolds number and this is related to pressure constant, which can be, which is called the Euler number E n. So, the kinetic similarity would be exactly obtained if F n model was equal to F n ship, R n model equal to R n ship and E n model equal to E n ship, right. This is what we started with, is not it? The kin kinetic similarity, we had defined these four forces that act on the propeller. And the ratios, this is the three ratios we have defined as ratios of any two of these. And they give us three numbers, dimensionless numbers. And if the kinetic similarity is to be maintained, then these three numbers, that is F n model must be equal to F n ship, R n model equal to R n ship and Euler number model is equal to Euler number ship. This is what 
we should have. So, if this is attained, then doing a model experiment on the propeller, we would get the relationships between torque and thrust with rpm and speed and we could assume that the same relationship holds for the full scale ship, full scale ship propeller, we are talking about the propeller. Uh, now, in uh, for the propeller, what is the characteristic length is diameter, therefore, fruit number in case of propeller will be V d by root g d and Reynolds number will be, what will be the Reynolds number? Mind you this V is V A, this V I am talking about is the speed of advance. We have generally said speed onto the propeller is denoted as speed of advance V A. Reynolds number is V A d over nu, is this correct? Is this Reynolds number correct? Is this correct? The speed onto the propeller plate is not V A. The speed of advance is V A, but speed of water onto the propeller is not V A. What is resultant velocity is equal to? the circumferential velocity is there, please remember that. So, Reynolds number is actually defined as V r into d by nu, that is the resultant velocity onto the propeller blade. This is, you see here there is a little uh, um, inconsistency here. This d I have written is the maximum diameter of the propeller, right but each section of the propeller blade, the resultant velocity is different because of this quantity. Can you understand that? So, this resultant velocity at any section will depend on its distance from the center, from the propeller axis. So, many times we take this at a standard uh, uh, standard distance from the propeller axis typically 0.7 d, okay, that is 0.7 at that distance, what would be the Reynolds number? Sometimes it is taken as the characteristic Reynolds number. Crude number is related to gravity force. Okay. I would have told this later, but let me tell you now. Crude number is related to gravity force. The gravity forces act at the interface of air and water. Okay. So, since we are immersing the propeller fully in water, the gravity forces act very little on the propeller blade we assume that no waves are generated due to the propeller. Do you get what I am saying? Because the propeller is far below, the wave generation is not there on the surface due to the propeller. That is an assumption which sometimes is not strictly followed, but mostly it is true. Propeller does not suffer from effects of gravity forces. Therefore, this fruit number is not an important, important criterion for propellers. I would have come back to this later, but I am telling you right now. Fruit number does not affect propeller behavior if the propeller is fully immersed in water. So, whether we take V A or V R or whatever, it does not really matter. Euler number, let us see. What did we say this as? P divided by rho v square. And this is pressure. So, obviously, it is V A only. 
Now, this P, what is this P? Typically, you can take the characteristic pressure as the P at the center of the sharp center line. Okay. That is P0, let me call it. P0 is pressure at shaft CL. Okay. That is if this is the propeller, then I am taking this is the water line, then I am taking the pressure P0 here. Okay. Now, what is this pressure P0? Is this height H plus the atmosphere, atmospheric pressure that is P equal to P0 equal to P A plus rho G H. Right. Now, if there is no cavitation, a phenomenon which we will discuss in greater detail later on. If there is no cavitation, then we can assume that this P0 behave the dependence on of the propeller behavior would be mainly on the static head rho gh, like we did in case of ships ship similarity. So, if I am also writing down there is no cavitation, propeller behavior will depend on static head. Okay. So, if that is so, then this H is geometrically similar to that of the ship, is not it? The ratio of static head will be same equal to lambda. So, therefore, if there is no cavitation, a geometrically similar propeller immersed at geometrically similar height will have the same Euler number or pressure condition will be satisfied. Right. Now, you see if we want to satisfy fruit similarity, what do we have to do? If I want to say F n m is equal to F n s, then I have V a m over root g d m equal to V a s over root g d s or V a m is equal to V a s into right. This is exactly the same fruit condition we had got for ship that is the velocities are in the ratio of square root of lambda between the ship and model. Correct? Now, if we take R n m equal to R n s, what do we get? Let us write for simplicity V a will see the effect of V r later, V a L m V a m L n m by nu is equal to V a s L s by nu. Now, nu fresh water and nu sea water are nearly same. So, what do we get V a m is equal to You get this, you could as well write V r in this. In other words, you look at fruit similarity here, 
and look at the Reynolds similarity here. We will end up with similar situation that if you want to maintain Reynolds similarity, then the speed of the model, the axial speed of the model will be lambda times higher than that of the ship. That means, if I got a 25, 1 is to 25 scale model, then speed of the model will have to be 5 times higher than that of the ship, sorry 25 times higher than that of the ship, which is impossible to attain in a water medium. Therefore, Reynolds similarity cannot be attained. Now, pressure forces if you equate, what do you get? It is already P 0 by rho V A square, P 0 m by rho V A m square is equal to P 0 s by rho V A s square or V A m square is equal to P 0 m divided by P 0 s into V A s square, right. Is that correct? This is equal to 1 by lambda rho G h into V A s square or V A m is equal to V A s divided by square root of lambda, which is same as fluid similarity. Automatically, Euler similarity is retained in propeller testing if we maintain geometric similarity and move models at similar speeds. Okay. Now, if we did a uh, dimension analysis, analysis like we did in uh, resistance, what will we get? If we do a dynamics dy dimensional analysis, we can write T as a function of, remember how we did it? We just, one of the advantages of dy dimensional analysis is that we do not know the exact nature of dependence of uh, variables on the outcome. So, we say that the outcome is equal to a general function of all the variables and we try to uh, equate the dimensions. So, if I write T as a function of, we can write now D V A N rho mu G and P. Similarly, I can also write Q as a function of the same things. T and Q are the two things I want to know how they vary with V A and N and these are the propeller characteristics, propeller characteristics and medium characteristics. Then do you wish me to work it out for you? I think uh, I will just give the results because the working method will be exactly similar. You raise each of these into different powers and equate the powers of time, put them in three fundamental dimensions L length dimension L, mass dimension M and time dimension T. With that raising them with uh, to different powers and equating the uh, powers on left hand side and right hand side, we can show that T is equal to rho D square V A square into a function of n d by v a mu by rho v a d and g d by v a square and p by rho v a square. Or t divided by rho n square d phi d square rho rho d square v a square is function of what is n d by v a sorry what is it right 
is inverse of V A by N D. So, N D by V A is same advanced coefficient. This is mu by rho is nu. So, this is Reynolds number. This is fruit number and this is Euler number. Is that correct? So, the dimension analysis shows us that T by rho d square V A square is equal to function of J, Reynolds number, fruit number and Euler number or we can write T by rho T square V A square into V A square by N square D square. is equal to function of. What have I done here? I have multiplied this with V square by N square D square. V A by N D is J, right? So, I have multiplied with J square. J is a non-dimensional number. So, multiplying this with J square and multiplying this side with J square will make no difference. I am just trying to find a convenient factor on the left hand side by multiplying with a non dimensional quantity on both sides. This quantity is then becomes what does it become T by rho n square d 4. This is written as the thrust coefficient. Is that understood? So, you see on the left hand side, my purpose of doing this multiplication was to remove the V A term from here. Similarly, I can define the torque coefficient. So, K T now is a function of J F n R n E n. Similarly, I can show K Q is equal to rho n square d 5 is equal to function of J F n R n and E n. Okay. And then we can define propeller efficiency. What is the definition of efficiency? Output by input. What is the output power of the propeller? No, output is thrust. The torque is being supplied to the propeller. Output is the thrust. Thrust is a force. So, what is the thrust power? T into V A. This is the output and power? 2 pi n into Q. 2 pi n Q. Right? Now, if we write it in terms of K T and K Q, then we can show it to be T and Q, T by Q will be K T by K Q with a D going up. So, V A into D divided by N will give J, 2 pi will remain as 2 pi. Okay. So, propeller characteristics are defined by K T and K Q as a function of J and other numbers. We will see how what is the dependence on these numbers. And efficiency can be found out once we know the relationship of KT and KQ with J. Okay, we have seen KT and KQ are related to J, right? So we can find that out. Now, just looking at this diagram, I have already explained to you that fruit number has very little effect on propeller uh, behavior. 
So, therefore, from this equation from physical fact that gravity forces do not have an effect on propellers this F n can be removed clear R n we have seen cannot be maintained between ship and propeller. So, how do you maintain the kinematic similarity between ship and propeller in this case? See this is the problem if we do not maintain kinematic similarity then our results are likely to be erroneous and cannot be extrapolated to full scale. At the same time we cannot maintain Reynolds similarity. Fortunately for us propeller is mainly a pressure based device that is pressure on the uh, face and pressure on the back the difference of that gives us the lift force. Lift force is not dependent on Reynolds number whereas drag is, but in propellers drag is relatively low less. So, the thrust that we get it will only have a small component as viscous component, but that will be erroneous extrapolating from what we had talked earlier in case of ship models. If the propeller works in laminar flow regime which is which it is likely to work in case of uh, model scale the, and we try to extrapolate it to full scale definitely there will be large difference in drag. Do you understand? If Reynolds number is low we know that the flow can be laminar and the drag of laminar flow is much less than that of turbulent flow. So, if we allow laminar flow to persist on propellers in model scale then our extrapolation of thrust and torque will be erroneous in full scale. So, an effort must be made to see that at least laminar flow does not exist and how do you do that? One way to do that is make as large a propeller model as possible. So, that the simple relationship V into D, V will be large larger because you are maintaining speed similarity or fruit similarity, V will be larger and D will be larger if you have a larger model. So, that is one way. The other way is or an additional way is to make the propeller blade of matte finish rather than absolutely polished like a ship propeller. A ship propeller is very well polished, but as a model propeller if there is a possibility of laminar flow then the surface of the propeller blade should be matte finished rather than absolutely polished. Once we assume that laminar flow has been eliminated and we have turbulent flow on model propeller, then kinematic similarity is more or less achieved though the drag cannot be extrapolated like uh, lift, but that error is minimal and can be ignored or today there are many methods by which you can make the viscous corrections if there is a large scale difference between model and propeller. So, Reynolds number also can be eliminated from this square bracket, these two brackets. We had eliminated fruit number earlier, now we are eliminating Reynolds number uh, because we cannot really use find the functionality of Reynolds number from experiments and pressure number is automatically attained if we move the propeller at corresponding speed of the Bit, uh, corresponding speeds between the model and ship. So, therefore, k t, k q as well as eta will finally become functions of advanced coefficient j given a particular property of the propeller that is pitch ratio, blade area ratio, thickness ratio, section shape etcetera. Is that understood? 
am I clear? If that is so, it is very easy for me to represent the propeller characteristics in uh, terms of uh, uh, kt, uh, 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 propeller characteristics k t, k q and efficiency as a function of j and that is how propeller characteristics are represented. And between ship and propeller, since we have already seen j ship is equal to j model at corresponding speeds then the relationship between ship propeller and model propeller represented, represented in terms of kt and kq as function of j will remain same. So, if that is so, let us see what will be the uh, rpm of the model propeller. We have seen J s equal to J m right that is V a s by V a by n d. So, what is n, n m n m by n s that is what is the ratio of model propeller to ship propeller. V A M to V A S, what is that? Right? So, model RPS is ship RPS into square root of lambda. That means, if you are talking of a 25 scale ratio of 25 and my ship propeller moving at 100 rpm, then the model propeller must move at 500 rpm. Is that right? Is that clear? Good. So, we have seen speed will be reduced model speed will be reduced by lambda times that is axial speed, but the rotational speed will be increased by square root of lambda and then what will happen to thrust and torque k t s is equal to k t m or t by rho n square d 4 for ship is equal to Assuming these two are nearly same, what we get T m is equal to or T s let us say T s equal to T m into n s by n m square into d s by d m square. n s by n m square is huh? Yeah, something has gone wrong here. Oh, 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 oh. That is equal to T m into lambda q. Is that right? If rho is same we will not use this relationship because rho is not exactly same one will be fresh water one will be sea water actual calculation we will use k t s equal to k t m from there we calculate thrust. Okay. But if you assume rho same then thrust ship will be equal to thrust model into lambda q it is similar to the proved hypothesis that forces will be multiplied by cube of scale. And q similarly will be can be shown to be lambda to the power 4.
So, so we now get all the relationships between the ship and model propeller. We have seen what we have seen further is that the ship's behavior, uh, the propeller behavior, will not be influenced by gravity forces, and we should take care between model model testing that the turbulent flow exists around the model. And we have observed that Reynolds similarity cannot be attained, but the error due to that should not be very large, and therefore with that assumption we can say that uh, the propeller characteristics obtained from the model in terms of k t, k q and efficiency as function of j will also hold in case of a scale uh, in the full scale propeller which is geometrically similar to that of the model. So, if we change the propeller the characteristics will obviously change. So, we will stop here and next hour we will see something more. Thank you. aspiring to find ways to fulfill a dream lays the foundation of an institution that will give aspiring technocrats the license to fly high. The first Indian Institute of Technology is born at Kharagpur. Founded on the basis of the recommendations of the NR Sarkar committee that was set up in 1945 to consider the development of higher technical institutions in India, the institute was first established in 5 Esplanade East, Kolkata, before it moved to Kharagpur in 1951. With Sir Gyan Chandra Ghosh as the first director and Dr. B.C. Roy as one of its founding guardians, the institute established itself as the symbol of a young, dynamic and resurgent nation. As top students rub shoulders with the most celebrated of professors and scholars, visions took shape. And IIT Kharagpur continued to play the pioneering role that was envisaged for it, enabling India to become a knowledge powerhouse that it is today. At every stage of its evolution, IIT Kharagpur remained ahead of its times. It provided the best of facilities for the budding technologists helping them shape their own as well as the nation's future. Indeed, today IIT Kharagpur has blossomed into a time-tested venerable institute of learning. With the rich experience of converting individuals into brilliant professionals through 50 glorious years. As you cross the campus gate, you feel the distinct nip that is IIT Kharagpur. The spirit of objective inquiry and lateral thinking hangs heavy in the air. The modern township-like campus of IIT Kharagpur set in sylvan surroundings is self-sufficient in all respects. From modern banks to the good old post office, from vast playgrounds and well-equipped gyms to modern auditoria and open-air theatres, and from the quiet fibre-optic-linked residential quarters for the faculty to the web-enabled hostel rooms for the students. 
at IIT Kharagpur, lush green bowers of tranquility coexist with smart cards and ATMs. Spread over 690 hectares of sprawling cyber habitat, 120 kilometers from Kolkata, IIT Kharagpur is one of the largest network campuses in Asia. Just the academic complexes itself spreads over a built-up area of about 2 million square feet, of which 150,000 square feet is the new complex that commemorates the Golden Jubilee celebrations. And that's not all. It is the only IIT to have conquered territory beyond its own through cutting-edge courses offered in its extension campuses at Kolkata and Bhubaneswar. IIT Kharagpur is not just about its large campus, but its diverse range of activities. It offers the widest spectrum of disciplines, ranging from aerospace, biotechnology, cryogenics, to architecture, mining and agricultural engineering, supported by strong faculties of sciences, humanities and management. There are more than 30 departments and centers that offer the largest number of undergraduate and postgraduate courses amongst the IITs. The courses are ever-evolving and show the way for other sister institutions. The richness in its diverse activities is showcased by the technological support the institution provides in areas like architecture, agriculture, post-harvest technology and medical sciences. The institute has revolutionized and popularized rice milling technology. The other major contributions of IIT Kharagpur have been in the critical fields of defense, railways, space research, power systems and petrochemicals. All these activities directly empower the human requirements of the nation. Advanced facilities at the Institute make it possible to undertake cutting-edge research and service-sponsored research projects. The array of equipment ranges from aerodynamic testing laboratories to intelligent machining centers, atomic spectrometers, to VLSI design labs, molecular beam epitaxy, to anechoic chamber, fast protein liquid chromatographs, to liquid nitrogen plants. The cutting edge technologies are at par with the best research facilities across the globe. In fact, the volume of research and development activities at the Institute is incredible. In terms of the number of patents it owns, the volume of industrial consultancy it provides and the revenue that it earns from all these make IIT Kharagpur a class apart and strengthens its position as the true pioneer in technological education in India. The Institute Library deserves a special mention. Fully web-enabled, it is one of the largest in Asia with over 324,000 volumes of material, including books, videos, microfilm and patent documents. that ensure a student's mind develops at the right pace.
along with its strong sense of academics, which is ensured by a strict selection process, life at Kharagpur is a celebration of, well, life. And at its heart are the students. In fact, the saying goes that you can take an IITN out of KGP, but not KGP out of an IITN. You've left a part of you behind. For most of the students, life in the campus was in itself a festivity, a collage of activities that shape their mind and body. In areas ranging from vehicle structure design to electrical communication and software technologies, are excellent examples of IIT Kharagpur's ever-evolving pioneering spirit. Collaborations with a host of national and industrial majors, proven expertise and research repertoire. celebration continues, Pandit Nehru would surely have been a proud man today. For him, IIT Kharagpur was always more than just an institute of technology. In his own immortal words, it is indeed a fine monument of modern India. <laughs> 